welcome to the World Health. Hello and welcome to another edition of the Well Child Show brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. As always, my name is Kemak Onyenuchea, your host. In my opinion, education remains the fastest route out of poverty and underdevelopment for individuals, families, societies, nations across generations. And on the show today, we'll be looking at the quality assurance and safety of schools. I have a very prominent resource person with me in the studio who will help us do justice to this topic. Let's take a very quick breather and I'll meet you on the other side. Stay with us. Speaking about Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, this is the Well Child Show brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. My name is Kemak Unyenuchea, your host. Today on the show, we're looking at the topic school safety and quality assurance. And I have a guest with me in the studio today. Her name is Lanre Onita. She is a development consultant and a graduate with a first class degree from Babcock University. And she also has a, a master's degree with distinction from the University of Lagos. She began her professional career as a consultant with KPMG. And in 2019, she became an Obama Foundation Fellow. And of course, she has received several awards from different organizations for her work in development. She is the Chief Executive Officer of the Holistics Business Solutions and the Executive Director of the Sustainable Education and Enterprise Development Program, SEED, a project that provides counseling support and mentorship to over 700 low-cost private schools across the six education districts of Lagos State. She's a published author of two award-winning books, and Larry is married with two beautiful twin girls. You're welcome to the World Child Show, Larry. Thank you, Kemak. Thank you for having me. So finally, I get you to sit on this chair. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. I know, I know right? Yes. I've been doing all I can to bring you on the show. Finally. Yes, I'm happy to be here. The big fish is with us. All right, Larry. So today we're looking at um, school safety and quality assurance for schools. And I know you do a lot of work around consulting with... Um, okay, first of all, can you tell us your passion for low-cost private schools like what gave rise to that okay so um maybe i'll start quickly from why education um when i started my business in 2007 i was looking at what we could do as csr and that was when you know the whole talk about millennium development goals were going on and i looked right. at it and said really what would impact the whole world, what, what is the baseline for all of the, these goals to be achieved? And I looked at it and it was quality education, right? right? If you have quality education, you can actually achieve most of, if mm -hmm. not all of the other goals. Yeah. And that was why we decided to work in education. Um, in, I mean, the tendency to move towards public education is there when you want to do, you know, CSR or social impact work. But when I started doing research, I discovered another crop of schools especially in developing countries that served the poor even more than public schools. Wow. So we saw a phenomenon where more poor children were attending what we call low-cost private schools even more than public schools. And I was shocked that it was in Lagos that I could experience it the most because Lagos State has one of the highest number of low-cost private schools in the world. Wow. So, I mean, research showed, and really, I, because I tend to be, you know, academic in of my course, thinking yeah. most of the time, and I mean, it was just uh, logical for us to work in that space because it was serving more poor children, and that's what we wanted to do. Now, great. I had the rare privilege, of course, of consulting on the Sustainable Education and Enterprise Development Program. Yes. Can you just give us um, a back story to what gave rise to that most impactful? project okay so coming from my prior uh, uh, passion to work in the education space um, in uh, 2018 
no, 2016, yes, um, we were invited to, you know, explore the research that was done by UK Aid mm -hmm. on the low cost private school space in Lagos. I had sensed that there were a lot of schools like that in Lagos, but I didn't have any tangible research work or mm. report that I could, you know, lay my hands on. So when they invited us, they showed us the massive scale mm. of low-cost private schools in Lagos State. We even went on field trips wow. and I was shocked at what was behind my mm. own community, you mm. know? Like, these schools exist everywhere in right. every nook and cranny of Lagos. Right. So um, that was why we decided to say, okay, you know what, we're not just going to do this as a one-off, you know, project, CSR, CSR project. project. We wanted to do it big time, so we decided to give the project a name and then decide to commit to it, you know, to ensure that this goes on. So what, what we did was we gave it the name seed and then we started uh, a pilot project in two local government areas of Lagos State with 51 schools, that's Ikeja and Ojo local government, and we kicked off the pilot program in 2016. Excellent. Now, I know your project, uh, knowing you as a person, of course, you're one of my best friends. I just might put that out. You have a streak for excellence. Yes. And uh, watching or being a part of the SEED project, one thing that stood out was the hammer on schools quality assurance yes. now first of all what does a quality school mean based on your experience as a professional and a consultant okay so most of us tend to think that quality has to do with only results yes education is about you teaching mean the and children's learning, the children's results, results. okay you know Yes, that's what we all expect. Uh, and you know, in secondary school, people talk about, okay, what is the YEC pass rates? Mm -hmm. You know, those are the typical indices that most people look at when they're talking about a quality school. But as the world is changing, we want our children to get a total you know, education. We want them to be a total child. We don't want them just to be children. Yes, I finished with the first class and I know what the way they label children with first class, but because I got an all-rounded holistic type of education, I'm able to function very well in the society. So mm. a, a school, when it talks of, I mean, quality, it's, it's much more than academic results. Mm. So at SEED, we have, we did research and looked around the world, developing countries like ours, developed countries, and we started looking at what does quality really mean for a school. Mm. And it's beyond just the academic outcomes. We have things like um, the learner and the learning environment, where um, issues around safety is. We have things about community and partnerships. A school is not in isolation. How are they connecting with their community? We're mm. looking at financial management management and sustainability. A private school, if it's going to be sustainable, has to exist as a business. If right. the school dies because nobody pays school fees, for instance, then there's no school. So we're also talking about financial management and sustainability. We're looking at things like how is the leadership. So most people talk only about teachers, but what about the school leadership? Right. Because it's important. Exactly. It's very because key. The leadership of every organization is a reflection of on what exactly. trickles down. Exactly. So even looking at leadership in two ways the school owner and the school leader sometimes mm. they're not even the same That's person right. so those things are very critical and within uh seed we have what we call the seed quality assessment tool where we came up with 86 different indicators of wow. what makes up a good school wow we need to do a thorough master class on this <laughs> but i'm gonna take you to task can you tell us can you give us at least about five or ten of those indices because the reason for this show is mm -hmm. to bring mass education and information to the populace and at the end of the day we're looking at building a well child like mm -hmm. you mentioned yeah. so some parent will be listening or watching at home and asking themselves okay it's as much ado about the quality of a school how can i tell a school actually has this um, quality or you know procedures put in place okay one of the my favorites that people actually neglect or parents is 
does the school have a vision, mission, and core values? So wow. for you to select a school, you must connect. It's the same way someone is looking for a job and they connect with the organization. For you to send your child to the school, you want to look at what is this school about? Mm -hmm. What is their vision? Mm -hmm. What is their mission? And what is their core values? Because there are different offerings by different schools. And if you don't connect, so if, for instance, in the US, you know people that go for basketball scholarships, they want to look at what, what is this school the about? Programs, you know, the program. The basketball program. Yes, what is the vision of this school? Do we connect with that? You know, people have rejected some big schools because it doesn't connect with them and it lies in the vision statement and the mission statement. And it might be so flimsy, people might overlook it and say, What are you talking about? Right. I just want them to do well in exams. But that's one critical one. Um, I would move on to another indicator around you want to look at uh, child protection and safety. That is very important. There are lots of stories around these days. You want to look at whether they have child safety policies. You want to know if they have a child protection officer. You want to know what their uh, policies are around you know, ensuring that every child is safe. So that's another one. Inclusivity is another one. You know, how inclusive is the school? Do they, do they uh, segregate children based on uh, their learning abilities or disabilities? You know, you want to check that out if that matters to you. You also want to look at what is the kind of infrastructure that they have. You know, the academic outcomes is important. It's important to us as Nigerians. But you also want to look at how holistic is their curriculum. Do they teach life skills? Mm. Do they uh, integrate their cu curriculum with other things that might matter to a child in life outside just scoring A's or you know, getting the best results in class. And then you want to look at things like community. You know, how well is the school integrated in the community? Are they in isolation of the community? How well do they link up to the community to be able to, you know, tweak their curriculum to solve problems of the community as well. So those are some of the things you want to look at. And it's very, very, it's a lot. 86 is a lot. But right. Yes, it's something that we work with the schools to ensure that they, they do well in all of that. Right, great. Now, there's this um, crave amongst educational consultants on learning outcomes in the sense that the things that children learn in the classroom, how they're able to translate this to their real life experience mm. and problem solving. Yeah. Can you, and you just mentioned that. Can you just dwell a bit on that point? Okay. And the relevance yes. that that has to, like you mentioned, forming a well-rounded, balanced child. Okay, I'm going to take it from the perspective of where we're going in Africa. Mm. So, uh, Africa is going to have the largest youth population in the world around 2050. And right now we're talking about unemployment, no jobs. Um, we look at the, the youths of 2050, they are our children today. Right. We can't even find jobs for the existing youths. Look at what would happen when the population explodes. explodes. How are we preparing our children for the future? 20 years ago, if they had mentioned that someone would be a social media manager, you wonder what right. job, what it, job it didn't exist. It didn't exist. And we don't even know the jobs that would exist in the future. So how are we preparing our kids to understand that they can adapt to whatever happens in 2050. You know, it's not about my child is going to be a doctor, my child is going to be a lawyer. Very soon, being a doctor is not going to work because there's going to be telemedicine, there's going to be all of those things happening. Wow. So what do we need to teach our children today to be able to adapt to what would happen to them in the future? So we talk about children being future ready and some of those skills that they need, creativity, problem solving, all of those typical life skills, digital skills, because it's big now, that would help them adapt to whatever happens. So it's beyond just literacy, numeracy, science. Yes, they're important subjects they mm -hmm. need to pass them but we need to prepare children more for what would happen in the future and how they can adapt and how they can be more of problem solvers and applying creativity to what they're doing and being innovative and i mean I, you can't talk more about solving problems in africa and in nigeria and everywhere you go there's a problem right yes yeah, so we need to teach our children to be able to solve those problems and in that lies being able to find something to do when they grow up because right. at that point they'll be able to create businesses around those ideas employ people and like i say that could be population can be a dividend or a disaster wow. so when we're able to teach our kids to do well when it comes to being a total child they can turn that population 
explosion around for it to be a dividend for us. Right. Yeah. Okay, we're going to go on a quick musical break. When we come back, we're going to tie in what you just said to your book, yes. The Kid Premier. Yes. And, of course, we're going to talk about your seed quality assessment tool. Thank All you. right. The Well Child Show continues in a bit. Don't go away. Welcome back. If you're just tuning in, it's the Well Child Show brought to you by Global Child Health and Safety Initiative. And my name is Kemak Onyenuche, your host. I have been talking with a dear friend and an educational consultant, Larry Onito, on school safety and school quality assurance. You're welcome back to the program, Larry. Thank you very much. All right. Now, before we went on the break, we were looking at schools being able to equip children with life skills and i know you have a published a book called the mini premier can you tell us the story behind that book okay so uh, it's a very interesting story i think when you were introducing me you said i'm a mom to twin girls yeah um when i grew up in an entrepreneurial home uh so when i was i mean when i had my kids i wanted to give my children the experience that I had when I was a child. Um, so when they were five, I started looking for books to teach children about entrepreneurship. Mm -hmm. And uh, I found a lot of international books uh, that taught them about dog walking, snow packing, babysitting, things that we don't do in Nigeria. And I was like, where is the Nigerian book that I can right. use to teach my kids? So I started coming up with worksheets and teaching them stuff, you know, on my own. And one day I looked at all of the resources that I had and I looked and said, this is a book. And right. a friend came over and said, how can you keep this to yourself? Is it mm -hmm. only your children that wow. you benefit from this? Mm -hmm. So I said, okay, you know what? I can make it a book and you know, turn it into something that others can benefit from. And I went, I started the journey on creating the book. It's called Mini Premier Children with Bright Ideas. And it's a resource that can help children start their journey on how to start a business. You know, most people say, how could a five-year-old learn how to start a business? But you know, when I started that journey, I, my kids started their business when they were seven right. years old. And uh, a lot of the other mini preneurs that we've worked with over the years have started businesses. So we've seen children have started businesses from, you know, age five, six, 11. And it's amazing what we see in Nigeria now when it comes to a lot of children that have decided to stop. Because our children are actually bright, they but are they bright. just need some level playing field and you know conducive environment exactly to spur and most times those people say oh, what did it affect the academics most of all the minipreneurs that you know have started businesses are doing extremely well in school so now uh, larry you have this project that you also ran with some schools yes. the teacher man to fish now i want you to you just mentioned about the fear that most parents have mm -hmm. that by exposing their children to acquiring real life skills it could affect you know the numeracy and mm -hmm. you know academic aspects of their school work what's the marriage between okay. the two so when that information you know remember when i started the book i started you know parents started buying the book and you know they started trying to teach kids on their own and they're like oh, this is not doing well so i went back to the drawing board and said okay how can i get this to more children and how can we you know look at how it does it i mean how well it would work in a school environment so uh, uh we started the project future for kids africa that worked or partnered with teacher man to fish a uk ngo and we decided to take entrepreneurship education mm. into the school right. and because they have worked in different parts of the world you know there was already research that showed that this kind of education helps children in literacy numeracy science stem all right. of those kind of things that we're thinking about it could actually be linked and mapped and their proven results that having entrepreneurship education can help children to do better and wow. what we did was we tested with some of our schools you know 18 schools last year did the program with 25 businesses created within the schools mm. with over 600 children participating and it was amazing wow you should see what the results that came out of that and of and course okay so we have continued the program this year and it's been amazing so far so for me it is the children are getting 
You know, when you say a child is not good in numeracy, but you say add 100 naira plus 100 naira. Right. Yeah, it's it, it's is, real life. It's, it's real no more life. abstract. It's no more abstract. You talk about science. They're doing science by baking. You can teach them science when they're baking the cake they want to sell. You know, you can teach them science by making liquid soap. You can, I mean, you can integrate. You can teach agriculture through fish farming. It was explosive. And you remember I talked about community? Yeah, right. In the uh, quality indicators, mm -hmm. the children went out to do research. In Badagri, for instance, they went to the uh, schools in Badagri, went to the market where they worked with uh, um, is it coconut trees to make brooms and mats. Mm -hmm. And the community was excited that children wow. are coming out, they're coming to ask them questions. Old people were saying, oh, we are losing this thing that the comes culture. from the culture of Badagri. Wow. They are happy that children are coming in to learn from them. And you know, there's so many testimonies. So it's an all-round um, all plus. Of, yes, plus. All right. Now, speaking about the quality of schools, I know you have a, 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 project, a product. Yes. That's um, the seed quality assessment tool. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a bit about that? Okay. So the seed quality assessment tool is the tool that we use to help schools assess their quality so that they can know where they are and they can start developing strategies to take them to where they need to be. Mm. So it's like a self-improvement tool. You know the way you go online and you know which, uh, um, what's that word? Um, whether you're choleric or- Oh choleric. yeah, personality type. Personality test. type, thank you. It's something you go to do just to know where you are in terms of your school's quality. So the tool has six drivers and 86 different indicators like I, I spoke about. And that's what we used when we started, I mean, in 20, we launched it in 20, 18, right. 17, 18. And we tested it with our schools and we realized that even without training, the schools are able to, once they know where they are and they mm -hmm. know where they need to be, mm -hmm. they started improving mm. on their quality. So what we did was that we decided that, okay, we have over 700 schools. Do we continue to grow our schools on our own? Mm -hmm. And we said that, I mean, when we talk about scaling, it's not easy to scale manually. We decided that we needed to, you know, rely on technology. Right. So, because we are largely in Lagos. And of course, it's a no-brainer. <laughs> it's a no-brainer. Yes. So, we've been in Lagos in the six education districts of Lagos. And I must mention, there are over 12,000 low-cost private schools in Lagos. Wow. So, 700 is, is Just, not even, it's not even it's a not tip even, of the eye. So, they're saying, if we're going to cover Lagos, there are 18,000 private schools, of which about 12,000 of them are low-cost. How are we going to cover Lagos? 18,000 private schools. How are we going to move to the 36 states of Nigeria? How will we be in Ghana? How will we be in Liberia? How will we be in South Africa? It is technology that would help you scale right. and go beyond borders. So we said, the way we have personality type quizzes online, mm. you can actually have Gauge the quality, quality of, of a your school, school as using technology nice. so you you register you log in you take the assessment and you get your results and you know where you are and then you can move on to now say i want to develop a school transformation plan based on something i am clear about, about. so if you're honest in doing a self-evaluation of your school online you would get a result that will show you where you are and then you can start planning towards where you need to be and all of this is tied into ensuring that our children particularly those from underserved communities have exactly. access to excellent education exactly because one of the key things is that a lot of these schools do not know what these indices are so everybody mm. thinks it's all about my children are passing exams right but, you know when you tell them all the other 86 different things they're like <gasps> It's a light bulb. Moment. <laughs> it's a light bulb. Uh, and they're like, I can do that. That is so easy because sometimes some of those indicators are easy indicators. Wow. They can quickly implement it and they just have something the that results. they didn't have. Yeah. I have to bring you back to the show. Sadly, <laughs> we're out of time. But oh. it's a promise. We're going to bring you back. And back. As a matter of fact, I'm tying you to my apron strings. <laughs> <laughs> because I know how difficult it is getting you to be on the show. I'll be but happy to come back. Thank you so much for the work you do, the brilliance you bring to your duties, and for being a voice and a driver for improved educational outcomes for our low-income families. Thank you very thank much. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you, Kemak. And that's the much we can take today on the Well Child Show. But as always, these conversations continue across our social media platforms, on Instagram, that's at the Well Child Show and at Global Child Health. And of course, you can send in your messages and comments, questions and contributions 
to our email address at info.wellchildshow at gmail.com. And of course, to view this and previous editions of the Well Child Show, you can log on to YouTube and search us out at Well Child TV. As always, I take this privilege to call on well intentioned organizations. Partner with us on the Well Child Show. Help us to go on this journey that will improve the life outcomes of our children in Nigeria, in Africa, and across the globe. You can call the numbers showing on your screen and someone will be right there to attend to you. Thank you so much for being a part of the show today. And as I leave, I leave you with this nugget. Child health and safety is everybody's business. I'll see you again on the next edition of The Well Child Show. Goodbye and God bless you.